today we all here on Instagram. We did um, we did a Bixi. We did kind of a long layer with like a really fun take on a face frame. And now we're going down shorter into like a true pixie. So I've pre-cut one half so you can get an idea of what we're doing. You can see very loose around the edges, very feminine, very kind of chiseled into um, short haircut pixie. Um, I'm going to show you how I did that here on the other side. Today I'm using uh, a guarded razor, the type you guys normally use. If you follow me, you normally see that I use a folding razor, a plie. But for this technique, because I'm going to do a lot of flat razoring, where the blade is really flat on the hair. Um, and typically, if I'm going to do that, I do it a lot more on short hair, like we're working with here, where I'm, I'm open to a very aggressive kind of texture. So here I'm doing what we call vertical skimming. And I want to give a shout out to two people that I learned tons of razoring from, uh, Michael Pulsinelli and Shay Dempsey. Uh, you know, because I never really worked with this type of razor. I was kind of always into the folding razor and what I had learned, you know, in the late 90s and early 2000s about that razor and never really worked that much with this type of blade. So shout out to those guys. Um, and this is something really inspired by something that I learned from, from Shea. All right, so you can see, you want to bring this hair together and you want to kind of bring the top down and the bottom up. So that's where the pinching comes in. And then I grab it. I look for the shortest point and then with the, with the razor skimming, vertical skimming is what Shay and I believe Michael both call this, I work my way through. Vertical skimming. That's going to give a lot of texture and really kind of take out a lot of the bulk in the hair. Bring the hair together, bring the top down, the bottom up, come back in, find your shortest point, and then working from short out to just a little bit longer on the edge. So we're leaving extra stuff on the edge to play with. As you can see here, this has already been kind of detailed in. There might be a little bit more detail to do once we get this side in and we look for balance. As I work to the front, I, my sections kind of go a little bit diagonal forward so I can work um, into the hairline slowly. You want to keep the hair damp with your cutting agent of choice. Comb this hair pretty much straight out. I don't really want any over direction for this shape. Bring that down, find my shortest point, and working my way through. You know, the longer it takes to cut through, the better, right? The more strokes, you really kind of want to ride on the surface of that section. That means more texture, more softness. Come through, pinch the hair together. The top, but the top being brought down helps to give some roundness to the shape, right? In a form of graduation. The bottom being brought up helps to give a lot of extra softness on the edge. So very, very simple idea in hair cutting, but very effective. And then doing with the blade, obviously really makes it nice and loose and soft. Wonder what you guys think about this, something I'm trying out, a wooden handled um, razor. You know, the, the type that you guys normally call like a feather razor, although this one's not made by feather, it's made in Japan by another company. Um, it's got a lot of nice weight to it. And uh, just kind of playing around with it, you know, seeing, uh, let me know if you are watching, you think that this is cool, maybe something Hairbrain should sell, let me know. Also using from the new YS Park 339 collection, one of the Gleam colors. They came out with this whole range called Gleam, like limited edition colorways, pretty cool stuff. I can't remember the name of this, but they have, they're all the, all the combs are on Hairbrain Pro, hairbrain.pro. All right, so I just want to take a minute and shout out to our awesome audience. Um, we've got our, our regular uh, community members who we know and love, um, Ben and Ben Brown and uh, Ronnie, of course. A um, couple questions. Is it heavy? It, actually, it is. It's, it's a lot heavier than the traditional one which in a lot of ways is good because then your hand can be very light. This is, it's, it's pretty heavy. I think I, I read it's like 63 grams heavier than like the other most popular type of blade. Um, and what that means is your hand can be very, very light. And you, you know, which to me is ideal when razoring. And then you can use the weight of the tool. So I'm enjoying it. Again, I normally work with a folding razor. But here specifically, because I am working so much flat, I, I like when I have a guard. 
um, so that it doesn't pull the hair as much. So now I'm detailing the edges, again using this skimming technique, which is when the blade is kind of really flat on the hair. And in this case, it's kind of skimming with the natural grain of the hair. Mike is wondering if you use a cutting lotion? I did, I used a lot of tonic from Bumble and Bumble. It's one of my all time favorite uh, cutting lotions has been since the 90s. You can see what I've got right here. Tonic from our friends at Bumble and Bumble. Um, it's lighter than water, <clears throat> so it doesn't weigh down the hair and add a lot of dampness to it, but keeps it, you know, puts like a little bit of that tea tree oil into the hair and something I always love razoring with. I've also got a little bit of grooming cream in the hair mixed with Brilliantine so that I can start to see the texture right away. So really, really simple way of getting this kind of nice roundness into the underneath of the shape. Um, on this top, I had a horseshoe sectioned off and I'll show you how I worked on the top here. So I came across, I started in the back and I just took sections following the horseshoe. So this is the back of the horseshoe, section follows the horseshoe, dropping it over. And again, first building length into the top, tilt the head towards you so it doesn't get too heavy. Come through. Now we're doing a horizontal skimming. So and another way of saying that is flat razoring, using the blade very, very flat. Now I'm using no pressure from my hand whatsoever. All the weight is just coming from the tool, which is actually really nice. So you can be as light as a feather, literally, and then use the weight of the tool and the blade. Jowney is wondering, what's the best razor um, you would use for a first timer and a left-handed stylist? Well, the good thing about razors is left or right doesn't make a difference. You can just turn the blade around and most razors, not all, but the feather razor and this razor. I mean, typically my recommendation, again, this is something new um, for me anyway. Um, my normal recommendation, I'm gonna step out for a second and grab it. My normal recommendation is made by feather. They look like this. This is actually kind of a shorter one, which I really quite like because of the way that I hold it and work with it. I don't need a lot of handle. This is my go-to go for a beginner. It's a I'm detail. just playing with this as something a little bit fancier and looking to see if we might want to offer it on Hairbrain Pro. I know they're a little bit more expensive. These are like about $150, but you've got the nice wood and the brass and the weight. So whereas the typical feather, like the one I showed you, is more like in the $40 to $50 range and sometimes even cheaper because we're able to put them on sale a lot. So here, just taking sections parallel to the actual horseshoe and building the weight uh, by bringing it down to the last section, but using a very open stroke. So you can see the stroke is going about two inches into the hair and following the guide through the underneath. You know, guides become more of like a reference when you're working with the blade. Um, doesn't mean that you're working just without a guide at all. Here I'm working purely visually, just working into that existing length here at the bottom. You know, this was previously cut into a bob. If the hair was a lot longer, I would have made sure to pull the bottom up into the shape as I was cutting. But you can see just pinching and skimming, pinching and skimming, pinching and skimming. And it should feel nice and fluid as you do it. All right, couple of questions here. Um, so on the cleanup for this haircut, like in the next eight weeks, um, would you alter the sections? Possibly, you know, I think, you know, obviously we get that question a lot and I, I just, you know, ask people to think like, hey, with color, when someone comes back in eight weeks, do you change the formula? Well, you look at the hair and you think, you know, did it work? Did it grow in well? Is it, uh, did it get too warm or this or that? And then you change, so the same thing, you have to look at it. Where did it get heavy? Did it grow in perfectly? Did it, you're always, you know, haircuts are like color. The formula should constantly change based on having a great consultation. So, you know, you don't just, um, I think sometimes we think haircuts are like you just follow this plan and you get an exact result. But again, just like color, the formula is always changing based on the consultation and how it performed. So yes, I could cut it exactly the same way or I could approach it differently. Um, ben Michael White is saying, um, wondering if you can come over and uh, butter his toast with that razor. And he, yeah, it does look like that kind of, I know, it does look like that, doesn't it? Uh, that's what it reminded me of these like knives that my mom used to have when I was a kid with the wood and the brass on it. Um, it feels great though, the weight on this is actually really nice. 
The blades are really nice. They make their own blade, uh, the company in Japan that makes this. So again, yes, I'm happy to butter your toast anytime, Ben. So now working into the sides, again, just sections parallel to the horseshoe first. It's going to leave me with a lot of length and weight in the center top um, to begin with, which helps to make the shape rounder. And this is a very simple approach to a round shape. I would almost say basic. Um, but what's not basic about it is your razor handling. You know, for me, when I work with the blade, with the razor, I really like my patterns and my sections and everything to be as simple as possible so I can really dial into what the blade itself is doing to and with the hair. Right now, over directing this in to uh, the temple area so we have more hair to work with as we come into detail the fringe as you can see we've done on the other side. So pre-cut the one half so we can kind of really see what's happening. Now notice I'm tilting the head towards me which does allow me to elevate a little bit here so this doesn't get unnecessarily long and heavy. It's still gonna be long and heavy towards the center top at this stage, but not unnecessarily, giving myself tons of extra work. And you can see how open and deep the stroke is, and working through. Yeah, maybe we'll call it the butter razor. Yeah, it's, it's funny that Ben, he's a very perceptive guy. Um, I, I felt the same way. It reminded me of like knives from the 70s and the 80s. But you know, the truth is a lot of these um, scissor and, and razor manufacturers from Japan and really from all over the world, if, uh, they also make knives. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they had a template that kind of worked for a knife and they just decided to put something different in here. All right, so you can see all that's brought over. It's still quite heavy. But before we get into any layering across the top, we're going to come across and work on the fringe in the temple. I'm going to redamp a little bit of the first side here because I did dry it so that you can kind of see. But now I want some harmony between the two of these. So using a little bit of tonic and coming through here. So again, I'm going to keep using this skimming concept where I really just pinch the hair, look at where it is, think about where I want the length. The skimming starts above the length and ends below. It takes you know, a good bit of practice to be able to get this length to where you want it. So again, great to practice on mannequins like I'm doing here with my pivot point, um, Erica. Coming a little bit from the underneath there. Um, which is also kind of cool that you can do with this kind of razor. I did a lot of that as I was refining because all the skimming was from the top. So I just played around a little bit sometimes by coming from the underneath, like so. Um, I do find when I do this, it helps to take these pieces nice and small. Um, this way that the, it doesn't look overly exaggerated and like just like five chunks for the bangs. So I try to like look at the way the hair wants to separate naturally and really let it separate. You know, and in this case, I'm just working with its natural fall. Sometimes you might use over direction if you're going for a certain vibe, but here I'm just kind of combing it through once. New colors of the YS339, for those of you that are um, fascinated with YS Park 339s or love them, there's I think four or five new of these transparent colors. They're called the Gleam Collection, and they're available at Hairbrain Pro right now. So natural fall and just kind of literally chiseling my way through piece by piece. Take some patience, but I think it gives a really nice end result. Working into these sides a little bit. Again, with the flat of the blade, horizontal skimming. I know that I always like to kind of cut a little bit of space in here when I can, so that the bang has a place to kind of live and fall into. And just detailing a little bit of this, you know, it's finding the right amount for this little softness in front of the ear that doesn't make it look too dated. Um, and that's kind of just something you got to play with. Let my hair fall down. So again, very simply, so the way I work through the underneath vertically, bringing the top down a little bit and the bottom up a little bit, then blend it in kind of more horizontally, all using skimming the blade in a more flat way. It's one of the reasons why I chose to use the guarded razor, so I felt like it could be more aggressive 
working so flat like this with the unguarded razor, although it is possible and I, I definitely can do it and enjoy it, it, it it's harder to do. It's, um, it can pull the hair, it can feel kind of aggressive, and if your stroke is anything but perfect, it can be very unforgiving. So I do feel sometimes when I go shorter and I go kind of visual like this, that I grab a guarded razor. Today playing with uh, something that I got from Japan that I think I thought was kind of cool. I haven't had a chance to do a lot of cutting with it, so I figured today would be a good one. Let me know, other than our friend Ben, who rightly says it looks kind of like a, like a knife. Um, yep, uh, Mitchell Cantrell was mentioning, asking if it was on the site as well as Ben Brown. Uh, so this one isn't yet, but you know, I want, that's one of the reasons why I like to do this. I like to get feedback from my peeps out there. So, you know, it, I'll say number one, obviously it's got a look to it, which you may or may not like. Um, number two, it's considerably heavier. Uh, it says on the on the Jap on the information I got 63 grams, uh, and that's a lot of grams. I mean, uh, I don't know how how to translate that exactly into ounces, but it's heavier, for sure. If anyone out there knows grams to ounces, come through. So now you know I, I redamped the first side so that I could see the hair mingling together. And the nice thing about this weight is I can be so, so gentle with my hand. You know, another great razor cutter, uh, Lee Clapson, he used to say it's like a, you want the blade to be like a butterfly just landing on the hair. You don't want to put a lot of weight. That's why you want a sharp blade. And if anything, you want the weight to come from the tool, not your hand or your pressure. And I always love that analogy. Uh, Ronnie, from our friend from Hawaii, noticed that you aren't using a lot of wrist movement, unlike the plie. Yeah, no, this is different, you know, I mean, I'm kind of, it, it's not this like little movement that we do with the plie, I'm using much more open, this is, a, it's aggressive, you know, it's meant to be a short, really kind of choppy haircut. Great observation, Ronnie. Yeah, obviously someone who's done a lot of training with uh, razor cutting can notice the difference. So getting that, there'll probably be some more work to do here. But now I want to do a little bit of layering through the center top. Remember, everything was brought over this way. So the top's going to be quite heavy and long. Um, so I'm going to come through first vertically and use another technique that I never really liked when I saw in the past until I saw, again, my friend Michael Polsonelli and Shea Dempsey do it a little bit differently. People sometimes come with the blade totally flat and they go like this. But what I learned from those two brilliant hair cutters was to kind of come vertically and go piece by piece. And they called it splicing, which I love. Um, and again, works great with this type of blade and gives a really great effect for short hair where you want to. And what I've even more discovered is I can go deeper in the hair and kind of take out some channels here and there. Um, we have a math. Um... Okay. Uh, it's about three ounces, two and a half to three ounces. Three ounces is a lot when it comes to a, a tool. Like this in my hand, it's considerably heavier than the average scissor, I would say. You know, unless it's like a seven inch scissor with like really big, it, it's heavy, which again, if you don't, you know, everyone has different tastes. Like the normal feather styling razor is very, very light. Um, but the idea here is that the weight means that you can use less pressure when you're actually doing the cutting. And I'd have to agree with it. So again, that's what I'm doing there. I obviously don't do with an unguarded razor, like pushing into my thumb. And again, for a long time, I thought it was a kind of not a great way to cut hair. And it's because the blade was like flat like this and then pulled across all the hair. And I didn't feel like that was getting the effect that I wanted. And then when I saw my friends, and I say both of them because I learned so much from both. Shay Dempsey, Michael Polsonelli, Polsonelli uh, Shay with Sebastian, Michael with Davinez. Um, and they're, you know, just great, great hair cutters. What's the in intended effect as you do this? It's almost like point cutting. Like, I can take off excess length, and then I can go in deeper. You know, I mean, again... I'm not someone to tell people what tool to use. Could you do something very similar to this with the scissor, the clipper, whatever works for you. Uh, but it's just the vibe and the feeling. Like to me, you know, this just feels great. It feels like a different approach and a different kind of relationship with the hair. Again, when I look through, if I see any darker, heavy places, 
I just can kind of break them up a little bit. You know, always be open. Like I was just saying earlier, you know, 10 years ago, when I thought about cutting, first of all, even with a guarded razor, I would think, oh, that's just for people who don't know how to razor cut because I'd spend so much time learning how to use an unguarded razor. But the truth is, then I saw some really brilliant work from lots of people using guarded blades. So can any, any tool, can, it's the person using the tool, right? That's really what it comes down to. It's the tool using the tool. It's not the tool alone, it's the tool, meaning you, using the tool. Coming across the center to make sure there's no heavy corner. You can even come into some of that fringe and just kind of get a little bit more of a unplanned effect, which I think is sometimes the best for something like a short fringe like that. Coming over the back here too. Uh, Ronnie was reliving a scary moment, it seems like, uh, when Leanne tried to cut like that with the plie. Yes, yeah. That's, uh, I've been out there to Hawaii many times thanks to our great friend Ronnie and taught classes in her salon and Leanne, the owner of the salon, uh, yeah, I think that she went on automatic pilot and wanted to kind of do that with an unguarded blade. And again, not impossible. I've seen people like Lee Clapson kind of does something like that, but um, most people don't. Okay, at this stage, I'll put this tool down and just get my hands in the hair. You know, with short hair, we can really feel the balance and the distance from the head. Good. I can still feel a little more density on the side that I cut. That's because the side that's dry, I did some dry cutting into afterwards. But the lengths feel about right. So if you bear with me just for a couple of seconds here, I'll revamp the hair, put some product in, quickly dry it, and then I'll do some dry cutting. Uh, let me see. See, um, Karen, do you have a percentage of clients who will say that they don't want a razor haircut? Um, I've had it before and I didn't like it. Yeah, I mean, again, if, if a client who's new to me says they don't want something or they don't like something, um, I don't try to do it or give it to them until after I know them and have earned their trust and they, you know, keep coming back to me and referring people to me. Then if I think a razor cut is great for them, I'll say, hey, I know originally when we met, you said you didn't want a razor cut or you didn't want to be blonde or you didn't want to be this. But now that you know me and trust me, I really think it's going to look fantastic on you and I'd love to try it. I, try, I never, you know, try to talk about other people or maybe they didn't know how to do it or... And I never try to convince them until I have their trust. So just hand drying quickly here so we can do some dry carving. So what do you guys think about the wood handled razor? I'd love to hear what you think. Again, my first time using it. I like the weight of it. I think it looks cool, but it definitely looks like a knife from the 70s. Is that a turn off to people or, or what? And then even more so, what do you guys think about the new colors of the 339s? Pretty awesome. Uh, using the Parlux Allion dryer also available at Hairbrain Pro with the Magic Sense diffuser which I just got the diffuser um, we had it in the warehouse and I, and I didn't have one and I realized hey I really need one of those because it's a special diffuser actually I, you know, I know it has some it emits ions and all that good stuff I mixed a little blooming cream and brilliance together and split, uh, put it into the hair over the tonic just using some pinching with my fingers and rolling. And then we'll come back and do some more skimming. Again, very rarely, if never, do I use the razor, especially the folding razor on dry hair. But to me, this is one of those situations where I can. The hair's short, it's got a lot of product and slip in it, and I'm gonna kind of do some final detailing, kind of dry skimming on the hair. Um, yes, there's several people that are fans of it, um, they love it, and then there's one, uh, Akram for is mentioning that it'll be easy to find and stand out, and clients will notice it. Yeah. Great point. Good stuff. Yeah, I'm going to look into it and see, you know, what the options will be. Always looking for, first off, quality, 
Um, and it's definitely a quality tool, I can attest to that. Uh, it's made in Japan. It's got a great balance and a great quality. It comes in nice packaging. Lots of times you can tell, you know, uh, how much they invested in something based on the packaging. So I'm going to investigate more and hopefully we'll be able to bring something to you. Stand drying, I mean, you could also use a brush, but to me, the whole idea is this should be easy. Not that rock drawing isn't easy, but this is really easy. And it's just bringing out the cut. You should see a certain amount of roundness to the cut because even though it was, you know, not a very technical per se haircut, there was technique involved that produced roundness. And then the rest of all the, my favorite, kind of visual sculpting and carving. You know, without a mirror, it's hard to tell some of the details. Like, you know, when I do something like this, it's very easy for these to be too much. So at this stage, I'd really be looking in the mirror to see how much, how much length needs to be there, how much I can take away, how much I can leave. Looking at the profile, looking at the roundness here. Most of the inside should be kind of where it needs to be. I might just do a little bit of free form on the inside. It's now it's all about the perimeter when the hair is dry. Alright, that should be dry enough for the moment. Before I do any cutting, I'm going to spray a little bit of my favorite. This is like an oil spray. It's a hydrating serum spray from Goldwell. Curls and waves. Really gets it kind of lived in. And I will come back again. Something that, you know, I almost never do with an unguarded razor, but I feel like you can definitely do, especially on short hair, with a guarded razor. Working kind of dry skimming on the surface here. Deliberately trying to get some of this hair to kick forward, so holding this more like a pen and coming from the back to take weight out so this will curve. Take the weight out of the back so that'll curve. Again, this would be something I do almost piece by piece in the mirror if I had one, but since I don't, I'm just kind of going for it. It might be a little too exaggerated, to be honest. Again, it's hard to totally evaluate without the mirror, but I will take a little bit of this off just because it does feel a little exaggerated. And this is what I was talking about. I started doing, you know, cause all this razoring was from the top of the section. I feel like especially around these shorter edges, I can do some stuff from the underneath to make the ends of the hair come together a little bit more kind of in a peak. You know, important to keep moving around short hair. You know, don't push it into one set place. It can kind of get really too sculpted and, and you won't be able to read it. So not afraid to get your hands in there and move it around. And sometimes I say, again, I keep saying it, it's not like a crybaby, but without a mirror, with the mirror, I'll keep pushing it around until it looks better when I push it. You know, like when I mess it up, that's how you know you kind of cut enough because there's really no like, okay, well, everything's blended. I must be done. It's kind of more to your eye. We've done the technique. Technique isn't going to help us anymore here. Now we're dealing with hair and its expansion and little details. You, know, you could cut that out around the ear. I probably would have cut it shorter if that was my goal. I didn't want it cut out completely around the ear. I wanted some stuff that would fall over the ear. Again, looking for balance, even in this around the edges, trying to get my eye in here. Feels like there's a little more on the first side. Of course, I was a little more conservative because I hadn't cut the second side yet. And again, some of that work from the underneath. Some of this just right on the surface. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna take just a step back so that I can almost get like the mirror view of it. All right, I can see it around this. I can see if this side's still a bit too much. That feels better. I'm kind of carving this temple in. A little look at what's behind the ear here. Looking at these lengths on the top. Again, coming from underneath the hair a little bit. Everything's already been done on the top of the hair. So I think coming from underneath is going to give me a, a different effect. You know, I can keep cutting it from the top and it's going to keep doing the same thing. All right, I think I've got it. Again, taking a step back to trying to get the visual. And rest assured when I'm done, I will get in front of the mirror for another minute or two to really dial it in. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Again, let us know if you watch this later what you think about this or if there's something you're interested in. They're about $150. You can, you can feel it's a, it's a more quality tool, got more weight to it. So I'm interested in what, uh, what our fans and friends think. All right, guys, peace out.